Yeah, there's been some rumors that I've seen over the last, oh, Mark, a week or so. And it's kind of been buried behind all of this, you know, Big 12, SEC, Oklahoma, Texas news. But there's been some some rumors out there that um, Marcus Major will not be academically eligible for for the fall. Um, so I, I think it's still unconfirmed right now. I've heard heard some noise about it over the last week that, you know, he's not there. However, Lincoln Riley had a had a coach's luncheon. Um, it was earlier this week, and he talked about Marcus Major about it in terms of a guy that's going to be uh, that's going to be very a very big part of the running game this year. So I, I don't know. There's nothing definitive right now. I think I, I I've seen some steam pick up over this yesterday about you know possibly him not him not being there. So I, I don't think at this time I can definitively say yeah I think he's going to be going to be gone or, or he's going to be there puts a, if, if he's not there, you know, if he's not eligible, it puts a big impact on the, you know, we've talked about so many, so much uh, in terms of Oklahoma's depth, losing, you know, losing Seth McGowan and losing Mikey Henderson. If they happen to lose another guy like that, you're, I mean, you're an injury away from having two scholarship running backs at that point. So I, I think if, if, if that's the case, I, I, I would, and I don't even know, Mark, if it's too late at this point to, to, to look at someone in the transfer portal. It, it may be they may have to be content with with, with help from a walk on side. Jaden Knowles is a guy that we had talked about before. He played really well in the in the spring game, but he is a walk on. He is a guy that I think certainly will may play some depth, play a role in some depth here. Um, and then certainly if Marcus Major's not there, he'll he'll play that role. So if Oklahoma, I think they have four guys that will will probably play some in terms of Eric Gray, Kennedy Brooks, uh, Marcus Major, and, and Kevontre Bradford uh, from, from LSU. However, you're, if you're, you're a, a player away here, if this happens with Marcus Major of having Bradford, a guy who's barely been on campus. However, Riley has really rave reviews about how well he's done thus far. Still, having having said that, you're, you're you know, you're a, maybe a moment away from if Marcus Major is not with the team, you know, in, in the 2021 season because of ac- academics that he has to play more of a pivotal role on, on this team. I was doing some research the other day and the name TJ Pledger showed up on the Utah roster. I didn't realize I knew he, he left, but I didn't know where he had landed. Uh, Patrick Lane. Good to see you as you're always here. Appreciate that. Do you think, uh, the SEC will create a super league of their own and separate from ESPN. So here's my thought on this one. Think about it this way, Patrick. The NFL, I know some college football fans, I get this argument from time to time about college football being more popular than the NFL, and I'm like, just stop it. Just stop it. I know you love college football, whomever I'm talking with at the time. I love it too, but there's no comparison in the popularity of the two sports. Okay, think about how big the NFL is how lucrative it is it's so much more popular than any ever every other league in america well they started a network 12 or 13 15 years ago whenever it was the nfl network that network is up and running it's great it's the production is first rate it's first class they can air their games on their network whenever they would choose and they have yet to make that decision to, to to just break away from ESPN and from the other networks. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, so the so the first part of that's interesting. So when when you take when you separate the the unpack that a little bit, do you think the SEC will create a super league? You just if you just end it there, I, I think I wouldn't I don't think that's near term. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if, if they could if, if the SEC could pull Clemson and Florida State away, I mean, it's possible. I mean, you, you've heard some of those rumors. I don't know if it's actually going to happen, you know, or not. I don't think it's going to happen, you know, as in, in the near term. But, you know, there's a, a possibility of Clemson and Florida State, you know, as two big schools in the ACC, uh, to your point, w- would, you know, kind of move over. I mean, that, that could be possible. Now, break away from the ESPN – no, I, I don't really see that happening. You know, the the SEC network, which is you know the compare the com- comparison here, 
against um, the NFL Network, Mark. To your point, is has been has been solid for the SEC and solid for ESPN, but I don't think it's at the level that it could just kind of stand on its own at this point. So, you know, I know in in kind of looking through this comments, I know everyone doesn't love ESPN, but I think the one thing that we need to as from an Oklahoma perspective and just as college football, ESPN runs college football. Let's, let's be honest here. And it's the driving factor and it, you know, to a, it, it's making a lot of these, you know, these decisions, you know, behind the scenes legally, of course, but they're, they're making a lot, helping persuade a lot of these decisions. When, when you think specifically Oklahoma and Texas, they come into this league and they're going to make $1.3 billion overall, obviously not, the schools individually, but as that gets parsed out, it's going to be more than double what they made in the Big Twelve. So that's a that's itself as a no brainer decision. So, but so having said that, the power that ESPN has over college football, they're not leaving anytime soon. The combination of the brands ESPN and when you, you got to realize uh, some don't that ESPN means ABC and Disney. So so it's it's not just ESPN. It's they're all working together. So you've got that just monstrosity. And when that was combined with the SEC network and they launched in 2014, that when they launched the SEC network, it was the most successful cable launch of any network at any time. They immediately got into like 85 or 90 million homes. So if you're separating as the SEC from this or whatever mega conference you're gonna be, the SEC, super SEC, from ESPN, well, then there's no SEC network then. You're starting your own SEC network. Like the SEC network is ESPN. So yeah, yeah, that's not happening. But in terms of the SEC continuing to gobble up teams and portions of conferences, to Jason's point, I would not take that off the table. No, definitely not. Especially when you see those those dollar signs, that's, you know that's certainly a possibility, and and you know as we as we move into this, the comment that we have you know here, kind of talking about some of the uh, what the Big Twelve has, and I think that's partially part of the decision that some of these teams are going to have to make. Understanding what does it what does it what does our future look like here? Can we have a better future immediately if we move to if we have the option to to move to the AAC or the ACC or whatever whether whatever that looks like. Um, because they know that the Big 12 is on on you know very shaky ground at at, at this point, so to speak. So I think that'll um, that'll be the big the next domino to fall. Whatever team it is, Big 12, AAC, whatever that happens to be, that's the next big domino to fall. And then we'll see how that you know, kind of works out from there. <laughs> 